Following a bouquet of reforms launched by the AFS Bank to sanitize the foreign exchange market at the inception of President Bola Tinubu's administration, the local currency had received direct hits from attackers who were mostly currency speculators. However, the Central Bank of Nigeria appeared to have finally subdued arguably one of the most grueling and multifaceted attacks on the Naira in recent times. According to data compiled on the daily turnover on the official Nigerian Autonomous Foreign Exchange, NAFEM, between January 18 and April 18, 2024, it was revealed that the market has recorded a total turnover of $12.66 billion over three months. The trend in the daily turnover data showed fluctuations in value, with some days recording relatively low turnovers and others recording higher amount. Joining us now on the morning show is Professor Shagun Ajibola, former president, chairman of council, the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. Good morning, Prof. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Well, Prof. Thank you very much. Yes. Two quick things. First, uh, the Naira. The way to summarize uh, that introduction is to say that, look, Mr. Yemi Kadusu the other day was saying confidently in Washington, D.C., that from being rated the worst performing currency in the world, the Naira is now the strongest performing currency in the world. And that, that is as a result of the strength you know, and effectiveness of the monetary policy choices that the central bank has made under him. I would like you to comment on that. And then secondly, on this topic that we took earlier on this morning about you know, this jubilation that Nigeria has been able to get a $2.25 billion loan, 40 years, 10 years moratorium, interest at 1%, and that, uh, you know, according to Mr. Wale Edu, it's almost like uh, having a free lunch. It's almost like having free money. And that on the fiscal side, what they intend to do is to take long-term low interest loans while shoring up uh, resource mobilization in Nigeria. Those two issues. Yes, yeah, thank you very much, um, Mr. Moderator. Naira is a currency. Dollar is a currency. Both of them are mere tools. In economics, what we refer to as means to an end. The end itself is what is achieved using the currencies, whether you are talking about Naira or you are talking about dollar. Now, if we look at our environment, that is our economy, in the last 12 months thereabout, our currency is perhaps one of the most volatile globally rising to a peak in terms of depreciation. It is not devaluation, depreciation, because of the role of market forces. And also coming down to what it is as of today. When we start talking about the performance of Naira over the period, here we see the rise but what were the fundamentals that caused that rise in the nominal value of Naira to dollar? I don't know. What really caused that depreciation from 500, 600 to 1,800, 1,900? It's difficult to dimension. But one thing is certain. It is so easy for prices to go up. It is so difficult for prices to come down. In economics, we refer to as prices are sticky downward. The moment they go up, to bring them down, you need about five times the efforts to have stabilized them, to bring a price down where you allow it to go up. So we've seen lots of efforts, lots of first of what I refer to as low-hanging fruits on the part of the monetary authorities to bring the nominal rate of Naira to dollar 
down. The actions on the blue change, which from time, nobody understands why licenses for over 5,000 blue exchange operators were issued in Nigeria. Today we are still talking about 1,005. I am still not convinced that the monetary authorities can police effectively 1,500 blue exchange operators, but that's one. Then we've seen actions on the part of the monetary authorities. Banks offload the excesses that you have in your open position to bring liquidity to the market. We've also seen actions against speculators, black market operators, and some both physical and non-physical. There will see some confidence coming from external parties, investors, especially in the area of uh, portfolio investment. So all this combined has helped to strengthen the value of uh, the Naira from that <laughs> unexplainable rate of 1,008, 1,009 Naira to a dollar in the recent uh, uh, time. But mark my word, I call them low-hanging fruits. We are, we are still coming back to talk about the economic fundamentals facing our environment. Because we, after all this, we then go back to ask ourselves, what next? So that is there. Then when we now talk about the borrowing, $2.5 billion, you see, <clears throat> generally, borrowing by any sovereign nation is not the problem. The problem is what you apply that loan to. What comes out of it? What do we want to achieve from such a loan? When, as a sovereign nation, there are so many things that surround you as a sovereign nation. Your relationship with your trading partners, with creditor nations, with debtor nations, your relationship even with your correspondent banks, your relationship with international financial institutions, all these put together also define the strength of your economy vis-a-vis -vis your foreign exchange reserves. Now, if we are talking about 2.5, 2.2, I think. 2.25 billion dollars. Billion, billion dollar loan. The question is, where is that loan going in the economy? It is not bad. From simple economic principles, it's not bad to say this economy we want to borrow. So, so, amount. But what, what are you applying that loan into? Personally, I do believe that a loan of this nature should be projected. We should be able to dimension one after the other. How is that $2.5 billion going to be applied to, to help the economy? Into what project? Into what infrastructure? Into what areas of the economy? How do we want to apply it to strengthen the economy as a whole? So if we tie the loan to specific projects, then we must bid control accountability around it. If it's a well, real Mr. project. Mr. Edwin promised all of that. <laughs> Talked about prudent management of resources. Okay. Yes. And then we pray that there will also be working the talk. Yes. I mean, I'm sure you're speaking from experience in terms of what has obtained in the past where we borrow money and we can't see an appreciable um, investment impact. in terms of infrastructure impact on that borrowing. So despite the promises, like you said, it's that the promises, he makes good on those promises. Now, talking about what you've talked about, you said we'll take this further. And it's that further I'd like you to take it. Um, a few um, policy directions, a few, um, we've seen some gains, we have Naira gain, we've had gains from 1,800 Naira, now it's about 1,000, 1,100 Naira. But how sustainable is this? Bearing in mind that we are seeing the impact of monetary policy, but for that to be sustained, there has to be commensurate policy in direction in, in fiscal policy. 
So that's where we talk about, I mean, uh, Mr. Wale, I don't talk about oil, oil um, production. Oil, oil. We looked, earlier today, we talked about diversification of the economy. Do you think we're best positioned to sustain this gain in the Naira, or shall we continue to defend you know, in, the, in the short to long term? You know, the, the greatest challenge that we face is the impact of dollar content in our life as a people, as a country. And that is the number, that is the number one problem, which we have not been able to address. Moderators, let me just give a very simple example. Right here now, in the room, on the table here, the dollar content of everything that we have is so high. The clothes we wear, the shoes, everything. So I think the first challenge we have is to demystify dollar in our national life. How do we reduce the impact of dollar? How do we reduce the role of dollar in our national life? That everything, it boils down to, <coughs> excuse me, almost everything, what we eat, what we wear, has dollar content. So how, what do we do to address that? in a way that dollar will not be the determinant of whatever happens to us as Nigerians. As of today, if you ask the garage seller, he will tell you dollar. The yam seller will tell you dollar. Transporter, everybody. And they are right. I have a farm, for example, a commercial farm. In my farm, the price of one cutlass has moved in the last two years from about 1,000 to over 5,000 naira. Cutlass. Cutlass. And the blame dollar. Cutlass. The dollar price. Because it has import content. Mm. It is either that particular product has direct import content or the input to produce that thing has dollar content. One bottle of chemical which used to cost about 1,000 to 1,000 tiri, is today about 6,000 naira. I need all this as input in my farm. I need to feed people, I need to transport people, and so on and so forth, to and fro the farm, the farm to be able to operate in the farm. So if the gari seller is now talking about, ah, gari is dollar, somebody will say that gari is not imported. What of those items, those, item, those inputs to produce gari? That is the dollar content in our national life, which we need to address. How do we pursue I, I that? I like this your uh, explanation. But I have landlords <laughs> <laughs> charging dollar rates for a house that was built in 1970. Because the landlord sees that house as his investment. So if he still has school fees to pay, it's from the rent. <laughs> if he has to visit, if not his own children, his uh, relations, his own, it has dollar problem. So you will now look at that person that he will buy, he will buy fuel and is rely on his rent to survive. He will spend on so many other things. So that is the dollarization of our national life that I'm talking about. That we need to address. How do we reduce, for example, everything to the domestic environment? If, for example, today I can assess all the inputs I need in my farm, without any reference to import, without any reference to dollar, life will be better for me. Life will be better for farmers. Mm -hmm. Life will be better for small-scale uh, entrepreneurs. But it's not the case. So dollar should not be the determinant of what happens to our life. And I want to give two very quick examples. Look at what happened in India. The leadership said, look, if Indians cannot feed themselves, let them go hungry. If Indians cannot clothe themselves, let them go naked. As a result of that paradigm shift, India has one of the strongest textile industries in the world today. India with 1.2, 1.3 billion human beings, they are feeding themselves. They are exporting food to Nigeria and some other countries. These are the kind of paradigm shift we need. Okay. Then the myth, the myth surrounding dollar will have been demystified. Okay, so, you know, like you said, you wish... Everything was 
going to be truly based on our local economy and not be dependent on dollar. But you know what they say about if wishes were horses, you know, beggars like us would like to ride on them. You talked about India. They took effort. But we too, we had Operation Feed in Nation. We didn't get anything out of it. It was babushos, babulujas. We had every other thing to be able to produce. Buy Nigeria to grow the Naira. Yes, buy Nigeria, but it's so difficult for industries out here. So we are not getting out of this dollar trap anytime soon. Let's not deceive ourselves. Because we are also a globalized world. And even if you want to get out of it, you need applications on your phone that will run on dollars. You need applications for media that will run on dollars. The question I'd like to ask is, as regards some of these things we are doing to defend, are we ready? Because the consequences are there. So take, for instance, we have brought a lot of hot money in to defend, which also has a downside. The interest alone on our bond is going to about $1 trillion. I'm not talking about that. And the fear is that we are not even making revenue. Crude oil has slumped to 1.2 million barrels per day. We have a one trillion bond interest. So when all the Goldman Sachs of this world and all the foreign traders are praising us that Nigeria economy is growing so well, has capacity, is doing so well, and we are excited, is it not a clear case like they say in Europe? I call a madman a fine boy so that you you because they are eating and ripping from us. What will you say about that dynamic, sir? Uh, it's a it's a very tough situation that we find ourselves. But one thing that is clear is there is clear difference between maybe it's the mindset, maybe it's the focus, maybe it's the determination that we can see the first change as of today, maybe compared with where we were two, three years back. But like I said, all that I've seen mostly is harvest of low-hanging fruits. Then we now need to shift to another level to ask ourselves all the questions that you've asked. You know, the way the Naira was going, it became a desperate move to address that rate of decline. So, We've seen all these uh, efforts bringing down the Naira. Without that, perhaps our economy as are now will have been declared uh, credit unworthy. But they caused the but, problem in the first place by floating well, the currency. They are the ones that, you know, they, we told them that the dynamics of this our economy does not support a float. That even the Americas of this world still defend their con uh, con uh, currency. We all know how much Britain, Britain spent 14 billion pounds sterling to defend the pound sterling on Black Wednesday. But they slumped us into this in the first place. Well, it, they it, caused it, this in the first place. The fault is all over. You see, uh, like I said, sometimes ago, a currency that is not a convertible currency, that is not a vehicle currency, is difficult to float. Because the Prof, can, international, you that, can you say that again so that the people... If a currency yes. is not a vehicle currency, yes. if a currency is not like a Naira, hard, like, like Naira uh -huh. it's difficult to float. Say that again. However, mm. there is nobody, if it's you or me, that finds himself on that leadership seat and you discover that official rate, black market rate, there is a differential of 300 naira. Emergency billionaires are coming on on an hourly basis. And that situation has been left unaddressed. You would do anything, if I were in that position, I would do anything that I, I could do, like yesterday, to stop that. And I think that's what led to that floating of the naira. To stop. I don't the want arbitrage. to call, I don't, Yes, I don't want to call it madness, but it was... A, 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 a fundamental economic dislocation in this environment. So if a president comes in to see that kind of situation, what can we do immediately to stop this? It's, it's a way of the privileged few using official vehicle to earn economic rent. There's no leader that will want to just uh, accommodate that and uh, be, uh, life continues. So I think, I feel 
for the leadership. I feel for the president. See that kind of situation and see what can we do immediately to stop this economic madness. So I think that is what brought about that floating. If Prof. everything were to be in order, Prof. and that I'm, I'm sorry, and that is subjected to serious discussion, I can say that. Point. Oh no, no, no. You uh, are Nara, saying, Nara you are saying that the Tinubu administration did the best it could under, under, the, the, under the circumstances. It took a realistic said. view of the matter and took the decision. Low hanging fruit, possibly. But you've used the word economic fundamentals. That is what we have to talk about now. You said economic fundamentals led to the depreciation, which you could not define. Okay, now you say low-hanging fruits have been used to define the madness, uh, to address the madness. <laughs> now, what economic fundamentals must we now address Very good. to achieve that objective of five times the uh, uh, steps that you talked about to put this economy on a sound footing. Very good. In the 1970s, and you mentioned it, sir. Mm -hmm. In the 1970s, if you look at the third national development plan, that perhaps, as an economist, has been the first attempt at redefining this economy since independence. Third national development plan, 1975 to 1980. We came up with some strategies, import substitution strategy, export promotion strategies. Let's see what we, we are now talking about economic fundamentals. Let's see what we could do to be economically independent as a country. What are those things we need not import that we continue to accommodate in this environment? Look at sector by sector. 60 years after independence, why should Nigeria still be importing rice to feed Nigerians? 50 years after independence, let's take our sector one after the other. If we make your players that came up in the 1970s, many of them are dead today. We talk about the Gawaii and Kibu producing the best That's called domestic the and the industrial yeah. cables. One of the best in Africa. Where is it? Oluwa Glass in Bokoda. Bedek Battery is solo here. Better glass. Better glass. You know, you know, or can be skit. Or gone. So those are the fundamentals we need to address. How do we get back? How do we hold that document? In fact, I was calling for that we need a new industrial policy in Nigeria to address some of these gaps. What caused the, the collapse of those industries? Look at textile. Where is United Nigeria textile in Kaduna today? Where is the champion? Where is Udua Testai? Where is Western Testai? Where, where, become churches. Where, where's where's the, Adebo Ali Electronics? Where's Adebo Fridge? That's but a, we that's know a, what that's caused a, the problem because so, these same people couldn't compete. One, because this same economy fell in the 70s and smuggling came in. That is where I'm People going. like Adebo Ali could not sell his fridge at a competitive rate because the smaller alternatives were smuggled into this country because of corruption at the customs. Look at even battery. So, Me at the battery. battery, where is Excite battery in Ibadan? So, this is the same problem. But we don't fix this problem over the years. So, how can we fix this fundamental problem? Because we keep talking production, production, but well, we're not doing anything. That is the challenge of leadership. So, that is where we need to focus efforts now. To me, like I said, we've done well in the area of uh, harvesting low-hanging fruits, and so on and so forth. But if we don't face the fundamentals, in a few months' time, we sit down and be asking ourselves, so what, what next? Okay. So we need to now go back. That's why I was calling for a new industrial policy, policy. entirely to address. We used to talk about infant industry argument. Rather than opening up our borders, like my comment and my position, with the 43 items, yeah. That uh, were earlier banned from official market and were brought back to the market. I will say it's not the issue of whether they are putting pressure on the black market or not. It's the issue of what is our focus in terms of industrial efforts in this environment. Should we have a policy that should still encourage importation of toothpicks into Nigeria? Does this government have an industrial policy? That is, I'm calling for one. Uh, well, well, there has always been one. Well, that, under, that under, is under so the we need Jonathan a administration, and there was not, a trade and industrial. No, but does this government have an industrial policy? policy? 
Does this government have one? I'm asking for a, ref a refusal. Well, on that, one that is on. I hope. Another trade policy. For example, how do we protect the small uh, scale industrialists? Yeah. Those that are struggling with small good items into this mm. environment. And we want them to grow from infant to adulthood. Mm. What well, policy do we rough. put in place? These are areas we must, like yesterday, address so that the fundamentals that have uh, opened up our economy to import, that no, there is hardly an African in Nigeria that could survive yeah. today without well, relying on something that is important. I How do we share yeah. that paradigm? I hope thank the people are listening. Then in the area of export, we also need, because as we had import uh, substitution, uh, strategies. We, we also had the export promotion strategy, non well, oil export. Prof, we have to go. <laughs> to go. We need an industrial <laughs> policy, trade policy, new ones, yeah. because we, we've always had. Change the paradigm, address the fundamentals. Thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Ajibola, for joining us on the morning show.